Good morning, modern steaders. It's 24 degrees out. And what did you just say, Olivia? It feels like 32. You just said it's warm out, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not warm out. We're already getting used to this crazy cold weather. <laughs> it's not our Thanksgiving yet, but it's your Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. You don't want to say happy Thanksgiving <laughs> happy to them? Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <sighs> Olivia's got a short week of school this week, and I bet you if you have kids, your kids only have a couple days of school. Olivia has two days of school this week. What do your kids have? You excited for that? You get three days off. Kind of, but not. Why not? Because I like hanging out with you, but I also like going to school. <gasps> Oh, your dad's not cool enough. No. You'd rather be at school than no. hang out with dad. No. Oh. <laughs> Yesterday I was able to get two of Andy's girls in the winter greenhouse. I'm hoping today I can get Andy and the two other ladies he hangs out with. Oh, they're coming down. Don't be bashful. Okay, have a good day at school. Make somebody smile today. I will. Okay, love you. Love you. You're crazy. You're crazy. A friend of ours ended up having a greyhound get into some of his chickens. And he lost, I think, four or five of them. And he needed some more. So we traded some of the chicks from New York City for some firewood. I figured that'd be a good botter since I think we're going to have a pretty cold and long winter. I don't think it's a bad thing to have extra firewood on hand this winter. So Moose has a few less ladies to keep an eye on. He might not like that. But I figure we had all those barred rock chicks hatch out. So they're going to be laying eggs pretty soon. And I might keep these chickens and moose in New York City all winter, so the less chickens there is in this flock, the more room they'll have. I'll give them their water in the coop today. How's that water, huh? So we have one, two, three, four, five chickens out here. And we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have 10, including moose. We have four hens in Andy's group, plus Andy, so that's five, that's 15. And we got one that was the broody hen that hatched out chickens, that was the Novagen. Then we have the broody hen, that's the mean broody hen. Then we got, I don't know, we probably got 10 plus chicks, or pullets, I should say right now, in the greenhouse. So what's that? We have, say, 15 laying hens right now that are laying. And then we'll have another 10 that'll be laying probably come springtime. So we're going to have more than enough eggs. Come on. Come on. I like always having a few extra chickens on hand. So that way if the chickens slow down, we have them. If somebody else needs some chickens, we can trade them, sell them, barter them. I don't know. I just think chickens that are laying eggs are hard to come by. It's kind of just a nice little thing to keep a little extra surplus of. 
It takes three months for a chicken to start laying eggs. So if you lose a chicken to a predator or anything, it takes a little while to recoup that. Some of our meat birds that we butchered this summer are a little on the small side. So what I do is I cook up two of them at a time then. And it, if the nice pot is, it makes a better bone broth because there's more bones. Less meat, but more bones. So I helped a friend butcher some pigs this past weekend. He raised the black heritage breed. It's just interesting to see the difference between the, the, the different breeds. Um, his had a lot more back fat. I think the loin part, or the front part of the loin, was smaller than the pigs we raised. His pig weighed 300 pounds hanging weight, and then our pigs were, I think, 240. And our loins were bigger. He had more bacon off of his pigs. Don't judge my hair. It's the worst part about wintertime, putting on and off. Winter hats messes up your hairdo. I have a lot of people ask me, what breed of pig should I get? The way I look at it is, get a heritage breed pig that you can find in your area. Raise it. If you don't like the size of the different cuts of meat, then try a different breed. The old heritage breeds pigs were bred for certain things. Some of them are longer, so they got more bacon, and they have a smaller loin or a bigger loin. They got a bigger ham, they got a smaller ham. Now that we have dinner going, we can get back to the project I wanted to do. I need to find a new way to lock up New York City. When we get back outside, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I'm hoping, don't judge my mess, hoping I can find some sort of pin to use or something we can use for a pin. I usually save a bunch of odds and ends to use for different things. Bunch of washers from something. Ouch. That's too big in diameter. I got this pin. That's too big. Oh, what's this? I think that's from a light fixture. That's not very big. Let's try using this as a pin to lock the sliding door. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So today's your Thanksgiving. It's not ours yet. But on our Thanksgiving, the day that this video is airing, it's supposed to be 12 degrees for a high. What is up with that? That's normally our January and February weather, not Thanksgiving weather. A lot of times in Thanksgiving, we can be in sweatshirts. <sighs> So this ramp folds up, and I usually latch it up once the store is down. And that makes it so no animals can get in. But this is gets snow all over it, so I can't close it and latch it nicely, like right here. So I don't want an animal to get under it and pour it up. So I'm thinking if I drill a hole through here and into the New York City, I can just put this in and it'll pin it. We're in a stud, and then I'll have to get the hole a little bigger. I like it. So now the question, when we keep it up high, oh, we can use that hole again. Look at that. And then it won't fall down. We'll have a place to store it. Let's oblong it a little bit better. Perfect. Had to get some diesel fuel for the tractor today. I made sure I got some diesel service to put in it. 911. I know they haven't put, I know they haven't made winter fuel yet with the diesel. They said today we're supposed to get above freezing. I don't see that happening. It's still pretty cold though. 
warmest day of the week. And it's not that warm. What's the temperatures been in your neck of the woods? Is it colder than normal or what? I think that'll do it. Oh yeah, look at that, right up to the top. Supposed to get a few more snowstorms. Supposed to get a few more snowstorms this week. Figure I better bring in some of the new firewood since I don't have it covered where it gets buried in snow. I might have a tarp kicking around we can put over the rest of the pile. What are you sniffing for? You smell anything good, Pluto? Huh? Andy wants in, but he won't let me catch him yet. Hopefully tonight I'll be able to catch him and put him in the greenhouse. What are you doing, Mr. Figaro? Huh? I have a hard time throwing away old tarps. I have no idea what size this is, but I think it'll be big enough. do it. I should have done this a long time ago, but better late than never. I think it just fits. That ball's almost hitting the firewood. And up here, hopefully it clears the door. Oh yeah, perfect. And then we'll let one of the butchering tables stay out under the eave.
It's warm out, huh, Libby's? Yeah. It's a heat wave. Mm -hmm. It's 37 degrees out. I mean, it's a pretty good heat wave. Yeah. I mean, it's almost 40 degrees. That's Turn right, out. it almost is. It feels nice, but you still need your winter jacket. <coughs> yeah, it's still winter weather, though. Yeah. How many eggs we'll get today since we're short six chickens. There's an icicle. Like this right here. Yeah, we still got quite a few eggs. Seven eggs and we have ten chickens. Or nine. We'll wash it. Normally, we get about like a dozen. Mm -hmm. Almost. Walk the line. I'm just walking your foot. <laughs> What's the matter? You keep getting snow in your boots? Yeah. Oh, fifth time. Oh, is it cold? Yes. Oh. You have to get your snowshoes on pretty soon. Yeah. I think I need them. You need them? Yeah, I do. You're crazy. Yay. Oh, night tip time. Yeah, get off the door. Can't stand on it, it won't open. You wanna go out? Pluto will chase him back in after. Hello. No, I don't think they'll eat eggs. They might sniff them. Hello. Hello. Watch out when Pluto comes. Yeah, I was on top of it. And then you sunk. Like, right as you like lift your other foot up, you sink. Hi. 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 You ready? Like, I don't think on this. Here it comes me. Pluto. Slow down. Oh, Sit down, Pluto. Olivia, stay over here and get the goats back in. You're running away, they're following you. Pluto. There you go. <laughs> Is she a foolish dog? You ate all your hay. It's so warm, the snow's melting. Ready to go in and start cooking dinner? Yeah. You look cold. There's snow in my boot. Oh, you got more snow in your boot? Yeah, and there's a big clump in there. It's all right guys, we're gonna switch over to the head mounted GoPro right now. It's dark enough outside where I think I can go catch Andy and the two remaining girls he's hanging out with. Get him in the greenhouse. I think they should be roosting. It looks like they are. Right over here. That's where they've been sleeping at night lately. Catch Andy first. If we can. It's gonna make a lot of noise, guys. He's noisy. 
Told you. <laughs> oh, mister. You gotta go back in with your ladies, Andy. Crazy uh. hair, don't care. <laughs> Look at Pluto. What are you doing, Dad? What are you doing, huh? You got a rooster in your hand. Tomorrow I'll have to put the roosting pole in here for all the chickens. I am hoping I can catch both of them. I only have to make one trip. They think they're hiding from me. She's gonna attack. She's in attack mode. Oh, you're okay. We got you all. It'll be nice and warm in here. And he's like, what do I do? I'm lost. All right, while well, we're out here, let's go over and lock up New York City. One of my neighbors driving by going, what's that crazy dude up to now? Man, he moved in and just ruined the neighborhood. Yeah. You need to take the snow off of the roof of New York City. Pull out a new pen, ready? Boom. Boom. I did. I got Andy and the two ladies. Did you hear me making all the ruckus out there? Yeah, because of Pluto. Because of Pluto. Pluto wanted to lick them. She's like, let me have them. I just want to lick them. I just want to lick them. I just want to lick them. We know you. You want to take a nibble. I have not seen what she wrote. No. So what are you thankful for, Miss Olivia, during Thanksgiving? I'm with my family, friends, Mrs. Howard, my food, and the viewers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. What are you yeah, thankful for, Mom? You, uh, Miss Olivia was prepared. <laughs> She's got a note. Right? I don't want to forget. That's right. I am thankful for my family, friends, and Jesus. Yeah, I'm also with Jesus. Yeah. Thank you for family, friends, everything we've been able to accomplish at the homestead this year, the growth of our channels, for the viewers, just how great the year has gone, and Jesus, let's eat. We wanted to thank you for coming along on our journey with us and supporting our YouTube channel. It really means the world to us. And we hope you guys have had a great year, and we hope there's plenty of things for you to be thankful for. And If you've had a bad year, just find that one thing to focus on, and just stick to thinking about that one thing. Think of your goals, think of where you want to go, just remember and hold on to hope. Start doing it, little by little, inch by inch, mile by mile, you'll get there, and you'll be so thankful that you didn't quit you didn't give up sometimes it just takes a while to get where we need to go but in the end if it was all handed over to us and it was easy we wouldn't appreciate what we have and it wouldn't make for such a fun story so thanks for coming along with us guys again and i hope you have have or had or having an awesome thanksgiving and we'll see you guys right back here at the next video at lumna acres a guide to modern homesteading self-sufficiency and freedom